Today, we're diving into a warm, sweet, absolute delicacy of a dessert. Vegan sweet potato pie. Perfectly creamy, rich, and excellently spiced. Stick around as I'm going to show you every step and tell you why my mom refused to let me in the house on the holidays unless I have this in hand. <laughs> let's dig in. First things first, let's cook our sweet potatoes. Excuse me? Sweet potatoes are tricky to me, so I find it important to measure them every time I make this recipe. An ounce or two up or down is a-okay. Usually, two large sweet potatoes or some combination of a large and few small ones will get you there. I used to do this method with a fork where I would poke holes in the potato to help release any built up pressure that could possibly pop the potato. But here's a pro tip, simply carve a line around the width of each potato. This little trick makes peeling them much easier and helps with the pressure problem as they cook. Boil the sweet potatoes until fork tender, which should take about 40 to 60 minutes. Trust me, this is where the magic begins. The sweet potatoes are the heart and soul of this pie. So you wanna get this part right. What other methods can I use to cook the sweet potatoes? You can microwave, scrub the potato, poke holes in it, microwave on high for four to five minutes each side. And this method could be used in a rush, but really only if you're looking to save time on the front end. You could also roast your sweet potatoes, skin the taters, cube the taters, and bake the taters for about 25 minutes. This method may save you a little time, although cubing the potatoes are a little much. But the biggest difference here is in the contrast of the taste. You almost get this sweet, charred, rustic flavor in your pie. While those potatoes are cooking, Let's move on to our crust. For this, we're using vegan graham crackers. Here's the box I use because finding vegan graham crackers is like a game of Where's Waldo? Not sponsored. In the food processor, stuff them in there, however you could fit them in, and some dark brown sugar. Then cover and pulse a few times. Now vegan butter and pulse a few times more. With everything combined, the texture looks kind of crumbly right now. Press this into a nine inch pie dish. Use the back of a spoon or a cup to get an even layer. I like these spatula thingies. I use them for pretty much everything. Then bake it for about 12, 15 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit until it's golden and fragrant. Of course, if you don't have a food processor, you could mash the crackers up in like a, a Ziploc bag. Then just, you know, dump the bag out into the pie pan, add the rest of your ingredients, mix it up, and then press everything. When this thing comes out, it should look significantly different from when it went in. Here's a side-by-side -side comparison for the visual learners like myself. Okay, I'm joking. It looks exactly the same. At least it smells great. Back to our sweet potatoes, and now that they're done, let them cool for a bit. I just want to briefly show you how cool this is. It'll slip right off. This trick works for other potatoes too. I also spent some time removing the eyes from the potato. This way there's nothing in the filling staring right back at you. In our high powered blender or a bowl with a mixer works, combine the sweet potatoes.
blend until silky smooth, preferably with the top on, as I was literally just trying to help with some visuals here. Also, if you're someone who hates the stringiness from sweet potatoes, using a blender will help you avoid all of that. Yes, you can use purple sweet potatoes. You could swap coconut milk for another non-dairy milk, or better yet, like a vegan yogurt. And lastly, the cornstarch could be swapped for like arrowroot powder or potato starch. As I pour here, you can just look at that luxuriousness of the filling. I'm smoothing it out and making sure it's all even. Then pop the pie into the oven and bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 60 to 75 minutes. You'll know it's ready when the edges are set. The center will have like a matte finish and it's going to jiggle just slightly. Let the pie cool down to room temperature, then refrigerate for at least four hours, if not overnight. The wait is entirely worth it, I promise. Now for the best part. This recipe has gotten me stuck in the house every winter holiday eve for the past 15-ish years until it's complete. I grew up in a Jamaican household and something like a rum infused bread pudding would always eclipse a sweet potato pie. One Thanksgiving, this pie happens to show up with no name on it, purposefully of course. As a kid, I was really quiet. Also the middle child, not to mention having two Caribbean parents. My parents' I'm impressed bone wasn't easily hit. We could say I had a better chance riding my bike to the moon with bread pudding already plated in hand and exiting the kitchen. This is my mom. She happens to taste the pie on a whim. At this point, it, it sounds like a husky done stubbed its toe. Ooh. So I hit the window looking for an ambulance. The call was coming from inside the house. Poppy. My family calls me Poppy, but when my mom says it's slow, I know I'm in trouble. Are you make this? I shook my head to confirm. Now in my culture, to elevate or add emphasis, women will clap their hands in the same cadence that they're speaking. Instead, my mom hits the table like a drum. Ya hear me? You see this os? No come back in adios. If this na inyan. I haven't missed a year since. <laughs> this recipe is linked in the description or you can head straight on over to my website, makeitdairyfree.com. Hey, till next time. Believe in good. Peace.